The Beta Two Strokes are brilliant bikes and giving KDM a serious run for their money in the two stroke enduro scene. And in large part, that's because they've got the more tractable engine, superb handling, less likely to overheat, better protected exhaust, and cheap parts. But as with any bike, there'll be a few niggling issues which we'll cover here, and also some common mods. In some climates, the carby is set up too rich. Consult Beta's excellent jetting chart to lean it out if needed. Most report the float level in the carby is a tad high at 6.5 millimetres. That's measured from the body to the floats with the tang resting. Extended out to 7.5 to 8 millimetres. That sharp pointy end of the stand tends to sink into soil. Just weld on a piece of alloy or screw on a little bit of plastic like this. The base of the seat can rub on the positive lead to the battery. Just zip tie a bit of rubber or plastic there. The frame protectors don't quite extend high enough. You can rub the paint off the frame. Cut some rubber or plastic, zip tie it on. A few report the two engine breather hoses can come off. So zip tie them tight for safety. The wiring behind the headlight can rub on the head stem. Just zip tie it out of the way. It was the wrong sized rubber pipe muffler join on some bikes. If yours is dribbling a bit, zip tie it tight or get the correct one from the dealer. The edges of the mud flap tend to rub on the swim arm. You can just epoxy small rubber blocks to that area or trim the mud flap to suit. Common mods. Shorten and reroute the radiator overflow so you can just see if your bike's overheating easier. Like KDM's, the outer fork guard bolts can be hit by rocks. If it's a concern, replace with dome head Allen type bolts. Seal up the steering lock or don't get water near it when washing the bike. It can dribble down and rust out the lower steering bearing. Some report false neutrals with the long gear shift. If so, try using the shorter CRF250R lever. A few have reported their leg moves the fuel tap lever when riding. If so, you can hacksaw it off or just mount it on backwards. Remove the inner teeth from the rear brake pedal. These could potentially punch a hole through your clutch cover in a stack. If you didn't buy the racing version, consider adding a mapping switch just for a few more engine tuning options. You can get a better full lock turn by removing the lock nuts on the steering bolts and then just trim the radiator guards to allow the forks to clear. Chasing even more low down grunt, the JD jetting kit comes with a very handy little power valve mod. The beta clutches are just a tad heavier than the KDMs. If you want, consider Midwest clever levers or if you're cashed up, the Clake one light clutch. Some dislike the stock kill switch and get the KDM style one fitted. The Beta is a bit smaller than the KDM. If you're a tall rider, consider risers and fastway pegs to get more room on the bike. For slower technical riding, many find an extra three teeth on the rear sprocket works wonders. Beta rear fenders snap if you flip the bike. If you're into wheelies, make two small cuts to allow flexing of the rear fender if you do go over. Reroute the top carburetor breather hoses into the airbox. One rider reported the kickstarter touching the underside of the fuel tank. If it happens, just trim the tip of the kickstarter. I placed a few bits of foam in the gaps of the rear fender here to stop mud dribbling down inside. For gnarly terrain, I opted for the really good protective gear like the P3 carbon fiber guard and force accessories to protect the radiators pipe and crank cases. The fastway linkage guard is invaluable if you'll be doing a lot of log hopping or riding through big rocks. Don't be deterred by all of this. I compile similar lists of known issues and mods for every bike I've owned. And overall, the Beta is a brilliantly designed enduro weapon. If you've got any other tips, let us know. We'll post them here.